Well, it's good to be with you here again today. And um, I just want to take a reading from Isaiah today. And it's Isaiah 43 and uh, verse 3. For I will pour water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. Praise the Lord for that. He will pour water on him who is thirsty. So it's the thirsty who will get the water. And my question today is to you is, are you thirsty for God? Are you thirsty for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life? You see, when we look back in, in the history of Christendom, we find that all the revivals that started were through thirsty people. And, um, and God can use anybody. Most of the revivals weren't started by preachers. Uh, of course, God took hold of preachers and used them as well. Of course he did. But if you look at the Welsh revival, Evan Roberts, the group of young people, you've got the Hebridean revival, the Lewis revival. There's so many revivals that people decided they wanted more of God and they wanted things to change because they saw the sin and degradation around them. And they decided to get together and pray. You see, that's where it comes. It comes through prayer. But are we disciplined enough to be thirsty, hungry enough to set a time aside with God and say, Lord, I am, I am, I'm in business with you. I want more. I want an outpouring of your spirit, an anointing on my life. And I want to have such a powerful anointing on me that it's going to bless others. And I, not only I want it on me, but I want rivers to flow from me. I want rivers to flow through, through what I'm praying about, rivers of living water. This is what we're talking about today. We're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, it's the Holy Spirit that is at work in the world today. He came at Pentecost. And he, he says the Spirit came down in tongues of fire, what appeared like tongues of fire. And he's never stopped ministering and pouring out his power on those that seek him. If we're not hungry and thirsty, do we really expect to get anything at all? If we're lazy, if we're worldly, if we don't give time to God every day, we don't read, we don't pray, we don't show God how much we love him. You see, if you love somebody, you want to spend time with them. You want to talk to them. You want to listen to them. But if you don't love somebody, you're not bothered whether they're or not. That is a good question to ask ourselves today. Do I love God enough to spend time with him every day and show my appreciation of what he's done for me? And especially through his son when he went through all that pain and agony. Uh, when he went to Gethsemane, the sin was laid on him and Calvary's cross. The price he paid. Do we show our appreciation to him? by surrendering our lives to him and saying, God, use me, and not only use me, but keep that hunger and thirst for him all the days of our life and never become complacent, lethargic, lazy. The problem with a lot of people, and especially in this country, what I like about um, working on the internet, I see all what's going on in the different countries throughout the world. I mean, I've, there's so many nationalities on my website, uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, we, we covered all the countries in the world. We've, we read about countries we've never heard the name of. But what I like is what God is doing. And uh, I, I look into the meetings. I go to the websites, look at the meetings, and I see hunger there. I, I look at Pakistan. I see a hunger there in the meetings. And I know uh, that in a lot of places, they're suffering persecution in Pakistan, India, and uh, there's Africa the great continent of Africa, the hunger and the thirst there. And in the midst of the poverty in a lot of places, not all of them, but in a lot of them, you know, it's lovely to see you ministers out there talking to the poor people in the open air, them sitting on the ground, and then you see them in the meetings, the, uh, the, the ladies with the saris on and, and the full the meetings and in Africa, the meetings and India and Pakistan and other countries, of course, don't get me wrong, I'm not ruling out other countries, but that's where I see a real move of God and I think, my God, these people are hungry, 
But what are we in this country, United Kingdom? Gosh, we're a depraved lot. No, I'm serious about this. You can say, well, there's a great work in London. There's a great work here and there. But, you know, I see a lot of these works, but it's not really affecting the country. But when I look at those, it's, it's affecting the places. We need in this country, if you're listening in from the UK, we need to pray for God to move in our lives. You see, revival is about people. It's about Christians. You can't revive an unsaved person. That's when when we pray for revival. Do we think that that's evangelism and and uh, and, and saving unsaved people? No, evangelism is the outcome of revival. You you revive something that's got onto a very low spark. And you have to revive it so it becomes a flame again. It's speaking. Revival is about the born-again Christian that's become complacent, lethargic. The fire's going out and we're not hungry and thirsty for God. So revival starts in us. The outcome of revival is people being saved and the move of God in our communities, wherever. And we need to pray that God, if we are not real, we need to personally, we need, he needs to stop, revival needs to start in us. And we need to ask God to say, Lord, I want to be used by you. Pour out your spirit on me and start to be people of prayer. Now, our motto for this work is One Way Global Seven Christian Ministries. We are a house of prayer for all nations. And that's what we've been praying for for years, for all nations, not just for ourselves. Of course, we want to keep ourselves right with God. We're hungry and thirsty for God. We pray for all nations. And the great thing about when we go on the internet, we can see what God is doing amongst the nations, not just through our prayers, but through the prayers of many. Look, I could go on. I'm full of it. But I, 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 I want to encourage you today. Say me, Lord, it's for me this. Start it in me. If you're from the UK, you're English. It doesn't matter whether you're English or not. There's so many nationalities in this country, I can't keep count of them all. That doesn't matter. If you're in this country, you can pray. You can pray. There are live works in this country, but there are a lot of works that are think, they think they're alive, but they're Laodicea in church. We haven't got what we think we have. We need to pray that we will get that hunger and thirst for righteousness. Jesus said, He who hungers and thirsts for righteousness shall be filled. And he who... Who, 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 look, let me just read this verse to you again to finish with. For I will pour water on him who is thirsty. You're not going to get it if you're not thirsty. You're not going to have the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit if you're not thirsty. God doesn't bless lazy people. He wants us to come alive. In the Bible, if we look into the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was moving through the prophets. But have you noticed that when God was using the prophet, there was only a single person. Elijah, Elisha, and all the different prophets. Jeremiah, a great prophet. And um, it starts with the single people. He used the prophets in the Bible. And um, that's what I was trying to say. And do you notice when God was saying, speaking to Israel, he said, I sent my prophets to you, rising up early. Well, what was God saying? That he rises early. God's always awake he's always watching us so ever present he was speaking about his prophets he said he called them early do you ever get called early by god to pray i woke up the other night and i'm not giving glory to myself i'm just telling you the truth the prophets are called and they're called to rise early and start the day with god to pray to get themselves right and then to pray for others I woke up the other morning. I don't know what woke me up. I must have been the Lord. Half past four in the morning. I started my normal routine of prayer. I started a bit later, so it was around about uh, half past six. But I was woken up at that time and I didn't know what time it was. I thought it was my normal time. I thought the alarms had gone off on my clocks. I set two clocks to make sure I get up. I can't miss prayer. That's vitally important, prayer and reading the word. So I went through my routine, and when I'd gone through it, just towards the end, I realised the alarms hadn't gone off. And I looked, and they hadn't. So, you know, I was really pleased. I wasn't annoyed. I was really pleased that God had done that. We have to get thirsty for God. If we want revival, it starts with us, and it starts in the church. The lost 
you can't revive a dead person. They're dead in trespass and sin. They need the gospel. And the gospel is the outcome of revival. So thank you for listening today. There's so much more I could say. But, you know, I've said enough. And if you do these things and you start to show God you mean business, you will have the blessing and the anointing of God in your life. And you will be used by God to bless others. We want the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't do anything without the Holy Spirit. Believe me, you've got to trust him, abide in him and give him the glory. You can't do anything without the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was there at creation at the beginning, was hovering over the face of the waters, and he didn't move. He was waiting for the Word of God to come forth. And God said, let there be light. And that was the material for the Holy Spirit to create light. And it's the same with us. If we want to do anything for God, when we speak, the Holy Spirit's waiting for us to speak the Word of God, and then he'll create what we say. Listen to the Word of the Lord today, because if you do it, you will be blessed. Thank you for listening today.